This video is a complete tour through the Edgewonk trading journal. We are going to take a look at all the features and functions of Edgewonk and I will provide you with tips for your own journaling routine along the way. Before we dive into Edgewonk, just give me 30 seconds to explain what a trading journal is and how it will help your trading. A trading journal like Edgewonk is a piece of software where you record your trades or you can also import all your trades automatically. I will show you that in a moment. When your trades are in Edgewonk, the program will analyze every aspect of your trading, your trading behavior, your mistakes, and it will learn about your trading approach. Edgewonk then will provide insights into your trading behavior and your decision making. It will show you exactly what is working well, what isn't working well, so that you can make targeted adjustments to adjust your approach. The goal, of course, is to improve your trading behavior, your trading decisions, and ultimately become a better trader and improve your performance. So now we are in the Edgewonk trading journal, and this is what we call the home tab. The home tab gives you a summary of your trading account. In Edgewonk, you can create unlimited journals. So for each of your broker and trading accounts, you can create an own journal very easily with just a few clicks and then track your trades separately. This is done through the top right menu for our database management. You can see that we're currently in the journal called New Demo Journal 2024. When we click here, we see a list with all of the trading journals that have been created by this customer or by this user. You can very easily also duplicate an existing journal by clicking on this icon here. This brings up this account. You can enter a new name. You can select which parts of the current active journal you want to copy and duplicate into the new one. Let's stay here at the top and this is our global filter menu. Global means that if you select a filter here, it will also be filtered in all of the other tabs, which comes in very handy if you want to analyze specific parts of your trading program and your trading approach and you don't want to change the filters all the time. In the home tab, you can switch between three different display options. By default, we show the performance in your account currency. Edgewonk works for all international currencies. So when you create a new trading journal, you can just select the account currency that your broker platform is in and then Edgewonk will work right away and it will adjust automatically. You can also change to the return display here and then all of your metrics will be displayed in terms of percentage for the home tab. And of course, you can also change to our multiple, which stands for risk multiple. And then all of the metrics here will adjust to the risk multiple. We have our top widgets here, which gives you a quick rundown and overview of your whole trading account with the net return, the total win rate, the average PL per trade. So how much on average are you making and losing per trade? In this case, it's $61.89 per trade. You will also see the average winning trade and the average losing trade. You have the profit factor here and the Edgewong score. By hovering over, it will show you a brief description of what the Edgewong score is. We have the profit calendar here just underneath it and it will show you for each day of the month how many trades you have taken and how much you made. Of course, when you change it here to return, it will also change here to the return of the specific trading day. You can scroll here through your calendar as well and then it will bring up the other months. To the right, we have the evaluation with more statistics on your trading account. Because we haven't applied any filters here, this will show you an evaluation over all of your trades in the trading journal. So the number of trades, the average profit per trading day, your biggest winner, your biggest loser, how often you have followed your trading plan on your trades, your win rate without break even trades. We have the maximum drawdown of your trading account, how many trades per day or per week you're trading, and the current streak. So here we can see we have three winners and two losses over the last five trades. Scrolling down a little bit further, we have our performance by instrument. So you get a breakdown over all tracked instruments that you have tracked in your trading journal. You can hover over all the bars here and then you will get a breakdown. For example, GC, you have a total return of 8.32%, total of nine trades, seven winners, one loser and one break even trade. We have the performance by weekday here, so you get a breakdown of all weekdays here of your trading performance. And we also have a small version of our equity graph here. Scrolling down a little bit further, we have the performance by hour. So each hour of the day, you can see how your performance looks like. And next to it is the performance by setup. So in Edgewonk, you can track all of your different trading setups or strategies as some traders will refer to. And then Edgewonk will show you the performance of each setup individually. And then in the right bottom, we have a feed where you can see our new posts on our blog or new videos on our YouTube channel. If we now apply one of the filters, for example, let's filter for May, 
we can see that now also the home tab adjusts and now you only see your performance for the month of May and everything will adjust automatically. We open the filter again and here you can see the selected filters. If you have multiple filters, you can clear them one by one by clicking here on the small X in this icon or to clear all filters at the same time, you just click on this one. Of course, we also have a dark mode. So if you prefer to work in a dark mode environment, you can use this button here at the top and then Edge Wonk will revert to the dark mode. For the sake of this video, I will leave it at the light mode. At the top right, we have our menu here. So if you click on this top right icon, it will bring up this dialog. You have your profile. Currently, you only see your password here. In one of the upcoming updates, the light and the dark mode switch will also move to here and you will find other things that will help you customize your journal. You have your milestones as well here. We have a separate video on milestones. I don't want to get too deep because this is a very extensive feature. But essentially what we did here is that we defined nine very important aspects of a trader's journaling routine and trading routine. And then you can track your progress. For example, here you see how many trades you have journaled, how disciplined you are. So how often you have followed your trading rules, how often you've taken a good entry, a good exit, how well you have managed your trades, how your account is growing, how many profitable days you have, how many winning trades you have, and how many customizations you have made in Edgewonk. By hovering over the progress bar, you can see the progress of the current level. So here we have 66 out of 99 winning trades. After we have passed 99 winning trades, we will advance here to the next level. When we're back here at the top right menu, you also find links where you can manage your subscription. You have a link to our free journaling course. You can see our change log, which we update regularly based on what is new in Edgewonk and the fixes and updates we have delivered. You can request a journal review. So after you have taken a certain number of trades and you want us to review your journal, you can do that over this button here. And you also find the link to our documentation help and FAQ where we explain every feature and every button of Edgewonk. So if you have a question, just click here and then everything will be answered as well. Let's now come to the heart of the Edgewonk trading journal, the journal itself. And this is a list of all of your journaled trades in Edgewonk. If a trade has a red background, it means that it was a losing trade. If it has a green background, it means it was a winning trade. If it has a blue background, it means it's a break even trade. You have scroll bars here at the bottom, which will allow you to scroll through this table. And here you see all the columns that are available, the entry and the exit date, the instrument type, the trade type. If you're trading options, you can see that in this column, you have your setup, the tilt meter, the tilt meter is a visual representation of how well you are following your rules. So in this case, when you see a red tilt meter, it means that the trader has repeatedly broken his trading rules. A green tilt meter means that the trader has followed his trading rules. You see the direction of the trade. Is it a long or a short trade? The quantity, entry price, and all the other important data points about your trade. You can also open the column menu here on the right, and then you will see all of the available columns. If it's ticked, it's also visible here in the overview. If it's not ticked, it's not visible, but you can change that. And if you want to understand and see the trade idea, you can do that here. You can also easily swap them around with the drag and drop feature here and reorder here your journal columns. We have three icon buttons here at the top where you can on the first export some of your data to Excel. You can auto size all the columns. And if you have made some changes on your column order and you want to change that to the default view, you just click here. You can also change the sorting of your trades here in the journal. By default, it's sorted on the entry date, but let's assume we want to sort it by the return. We can do that here just by clicking in the column header and then it will change the sorting here. We want to get back to the default sorting. We just click here and then we are back to our regular view. You can start specific trades. So if you want to come back to a trade later or a trade stands out for whatever reason, you can do that here by using this star icon. We also then have a filter for those types of trades under the basic filters. So if you only want to see the start trades, you do that here. In Edgewonk, you can assign up to six screenshots per trade. And if a trade has assigned screenshots, you see it here by this image icon. And you can see when we hover over, it shows that the trade has three screenshots. We click on it and we'll be automatically taken to the trade where the screenshots are visible. You can add new images and new screenshots to the trade either through the Explorer here, or if you're using, for example, TradingView, you can just paste the URL and then Edgewonk will save it automatically here for you. 
You can even create a short description for each screenshot. So for example, here, if the first one is always your trade plan, you can just click on here, this field, and then you will see this text editor and this text field comes up. You can write a few words, a few sentences, and then save it. If you want to get more information on a specific trade, you can just click on the row and it will bring up here this pop-up on the right where you see all of the details for that trade. For example, the entry date, the instrument, the setup, was it a long or a short? And you can of course also make the changes here. You have your entry price, the exit date, you have the quantity, stop loss, take profit, exit price, the net PL, the gross PL, the fees, and you have a field here at the bottom where you can write personal notes about this trade. If you are scaling in and out of your positions, you can do that also very easily in Edgewonk, assuming that you're not importing your trades, because then everything is done automatically for you. But if you're manually joining your trades, you can just click here on the plus next to the entry price, and then it would bring up this new menu where you can see it's called scale in and out. You have a field for additional entries, for additional exits. It will show you then if you have entered more than one entry, the average entry price, the average exit price, and if you have open quantity, which means that the trade is still open and not fully closed. Only when the open quantity is at zero, then the trade will be recognized as a fully closed trade in Edgewonk. We have three menu options here for each trade. So we are now in the regular trade menu, but we can go also to the advanced trade menu. And here you can assign specific comments to the trade. For example, you can describe the entry. How well did you take the entry? Here, for example, in this journal, we are tracking revenge trading, entries that are too early, entries that are too late, impulsive entries, or the perfect entry. When a comment is colored red, it means that it's a negative trading behavior. And when it's colored in green, it shows a positive trading behavior. You can also add new comments here, and this is completely customizable. So let's assume we want to add a neutral comment. Then we just type it here, and then you can see we can immediately assign a rating. Let's give this a neutral rating and it's now here and it is neutral. So if we save that, you will see that if we scroll a little bit to the right, it is now a neutral entry comment and it's black because it's neutral. Red is the negative, green is the positive one. The three comments for entry, exit and trade management impact the tilt meter directly. So the more positive comments you have, the larger your tilt meter will grow to the right and become more green. Underneath the trade comments, we have the highest and the lowest price. If you're just starting out with your trading journal or if you're a new trader, this might not be necessary to track right away, but I want to cover it just for the sake of completeness. Under the highest price, you can write down what was the highest observed price during your trade duration. And the same is true here, the lowest observed price during your trade duration. This will then unlock other features in Edgewonk, which I will show you later as we move through the different features. OTP hit is something that I would recommend to track all traders. It's just a single button click and OTP hit stands for original take profit hit. And when we hover over here, you just have to answer the simple question. Was the initial target hit before the initial stop loss was hit? And depending on how the price move, you take it with yes or no. This is independent of where you exit the trade actually. You just want to answer did the price first hit the take profit or the stop loss. You can also use this option here for break even trades. So if this was a break even trade, you can tag it here with yes or no. But if it's not a break even trade, you don't have to make the selection here. Underneath the OTP hit and the break even, we have one of our most powerful features, the custom statistics. With the custom statistics, you can track pretty much anything that you can imagine in Edgewonk. And this is where you can completely customize your trading journal. For example, this journal is tracking the timeframes. It's tracking specific patterns. You can track your preparation level, your confluence amounts. You can track a mental status. You can track different indicator setups or indicator values. You can track the general market. You can track missed trades. And you have slots for over 20 custom statistics that you can add to your trades. You don't always have to open the trade pop-up to make changes. So specific columns in Edgewonk can be edited on the fly. So for example, here, the instrument, you can just click on it and you can change the instrument here. When we scroll a little bit to the right, you can also do that the same for your setup. And here also, this is true for the trade entry, trade management and trade exit comments where you can make changes very, very quickly. And of course, this is also true for all of the custom statistics. So you can make changes and edit your trades very quickly without having to open and go through the different pop-ups and menus. 
Let's talk about adding new trades to your trading journal. You have two options. You can either manually add new trades to your trading journal or you can import trades. Edgewonk supports hundreds of brokers and dozens of trading platforms. So we click on import trades and then the first drop down shows you the importer type. Here you just select your broker platform. Which one are you using? And you can see when we scroll through this here, there are a lot and we are always adding new one. After we have selected an import type, first of all, you can go to our FAQ here. So you can see we have selected TradeStation and you can go to the TradeStation import help. This will bring you to the article that explains how to get the right statement. And after you've downloaded the statement from TradeStation, you can just then drop the file here. And after you click on save and import, Edgewonk will import your trades within seconds. But of course, you can also manually add your trades. If you click on add trade, this will just bring up the pop-up that we have uh, analyzed and taken a look at a moment ago. And then you can make all of the inputs manually. And of course, all of the basic and advanced filters are also applicable here to your journal. The last thing I want to show you in the journal tab is the ability to merge duplicate trades. So if you click here this checkbox, you will see that you have two new options available. You can duplicate an existing trade or you can delete it. So when you click on duplicate, you will be asked if you really want to do that. There's no way to undo this. So make sure that you really see what you're doing and confirm it. And now you can see we have two identical trades here for this trade. We can, of course, delete the trade after we have selected it. But if we select two trades that have the same instrument, the same setup, we and the same direction, you can merge trades. You can see this is now available. If we select two trades that don't have the same setup or the same instrument, you can see merging isn't available here. So you can only do that when you are have the same input type, such as instrument, setup and direction. Let's merge this trade and see what happens. So we're merging this trade. And now you can see out of two, now we have one again. And what has happened? When we open this trade, you can see now when we click here on the scaling in and out that I've shown you, you have two entries and you have two exits. Of course, they're identical because we have duplicated the trade. So we have two entries and two exits with the same entry and the same exit. And this is how the merging works. So merging trades will just add more entry prices, more exit prices, and also, of course, will add to your PL of the trade. So it will sum up the PL of the trades that you are merging. The trade analytics are a very powerful interactive table. So by default, when you haven't done anything here, you will just see your overall trading performance, how many trades, and then we have a bunch of other columns which give you a breakdown of your trading performance. But this is just the start. We have ordering criteria here. For example, what we could do is we go here and use the trade setups. We click here on the plus icon, or we can also drag and drop it here. And then you will see it loads. And now we have this arrow icon. We can expand the menu and now we get a breakdown of all of our trading setups here. And you can see we have a detailed breakdown for each setup and we can see all of the different performance metrics here for the setup. But it goes even further. What we can do is also analyze, for example, the direction. So we click here on the direction. It will automatically here adjust. We have to open it up. And then next to the setup, now we have a new icon here. When we click it, we get another breakdown. We see we have three long and three short trades for the setup breakout. And now you can see we get an even more granular view into this trading journal and into the trading data. We can flip this around, it will load, and then you will see you have the opposite. We have long and short as our first because that's the direction here at the top. And then when we open it, you can see you have all of the different setups here. We have a list with all the columns that are available here in the trade analytics. Again, you can reorder them, you can drag and drop them around, and you can adjust the column view and the table view here. Now let's go to our equity graph. And this is the equity graph for your whole trading account. You can follow your trade development over time. On the right, you can see we have the return, but you can also change that. If we go to our display drop down here, we can change it, for example, to account balance. If we want to follow our account balance growth over time, or you want to see your ROI, and then it will change to the ROI of your trading account. Here underneath, we have a few metrics such as the trade winner, losing trades, the win rate, the average PL profit factor, the total return, your biggest winner, your biggest loser, and the total profit and loss. 
When you hover over the line graph, you will see that you get some information here. And this represents a trade that is behind this data point. And when we click on this, it will bring up the specific trade that is behind this data point. You can see the trade, you can make adjustments, and you can review here your trading data. The second drop down here gives you a few other options. For example, we can choose to display the value without and with fees. In this journal, there are no fees tracked, so it doesn't make a change. But if you are tracking fees in your trading journal, then you will get a second line graph here. We can overlay or underlay the tilt meter here as well. So now you can see in the background, we have the tilt meter growing and falling here. And you can see interesting correlations and relationships between the account growing and the tilt meter growing, which means that you're making good trading decisions. When the tilt meter is falling, it means that the trader has made repeated trading mistakes. You can also overlay a moving average here for your line graph and for the account. So let's assume we want to look at the moving average or 50 period. And then you can see here, this is the 50 period moving average. And this is very interesting to see is the account graph growing above or below a specific moving average. If the account is growing above a moving average, it means that you're growing as usual. And if your account growth is dipping under the moving average, it means that your recent performance is not as good as your historic performance. And this is a gives you a good indication of where you currently are. Here, for example, the account almost or barely dipped underneath the 20 period moving average. And you can see there was a history and a period of drawdowns and sideways break even trading results. The last option changes the grouping. So by default, we show you each data point here or each point as a trade, but you can also change that to group trades per day. It will not change the line graph too much, but especially for day traders who take a lot of trades on a given day, this might be interesting to see the differences in account development over days or over trades. Again, the basic and advanced filters all apply here to this equity graph. So assuming we only want to analyze specific setups, we can do that. For example, we have the MA bounce and also we want to analyze the breakout. Now we have two setups and you can see we have total taken of 18 trades, 15 winners, three losers. And we can see here the account development for those two setups. When you have active filters, you will see it's indicated by this two here. And this changes depending on how many filters you have activated. As I said, you can deselect and clear individual filters. So now we only have one filter and now we are on our basic overview with all of our trading data. While we're here, let's open the advanced filters. And here you have the filters for your exit, entry and trade management comments, and also your custom statistics. For the custom statistics, we have a and or filter. So for example, so let's assume we only want to take a look at our daily custom statistic and then also for index up. And you can see this is what we get, 32 trades, nine winners, 23 losses. So this is an or filter that will show us all of the trades that have one of the two. We can match that. So we have an and filter and this will only show you the trades where you have a daily time frame and the index is up. In this case, there are no trades. So you can very nicely change the filtering and which data sets you are looking at in your trading journal by using the filters and this feature here. Let's go to the advanced journaling and let's take a look at our trading plans. In Edgewonk, you can pre-plan your trades. So before you take a trade, a lot of traders want to create trading plans where they prepare their watch lists, they get ready for the week or before the trading day starts, they look for potentially interesting or developing setups. And this is where you can do it. You add new plan trades the same way you add new trades. So through this button and it will bring up here this pop up under the plan trades. This is a simplified version. So you don't have as many input fields because obviously when you're planning the trade, you don't have as many data points yet. But you can also use your regular advanced fields and your screenshots as well when you are uploading a screenshot for a trading plan. Once you have done that, you can see all of your planned trades here. You have a few columns that you can choose from that you can change and display. And then here you have two buttons for transfer. You can transfer a trade to the trading journal or you can transfer it to the missed trades. We will come to missed trades in a moment. So when a trade that you have planned becomes an actual trade and gets executed, you can just transfer it to your journal and then it will appear here under your whole trade data. 
And if the trade for whatever reason hasn't played out and you haven't taken it, you can transfer it to the missed journal. You'll be asked if you want to transfer it, you can confirm that and then it will be moved here to your missed trades. I have already indicated that you can add trades that you have missed. And this is what you do here under advanced journaling and missed trades journal. This is a table just like the trading plans table or the journal table. And it shows you all of the trades that you have tracked, that you have not taken, that you have missed for whatever reason. And one tip is to dedicate a custom statistic under advanced trades. I would recommend to dedicate one custom stat like here, missed trades for the reasons why you have missed trades. If you want to track missed trades, not all traders want to track missed trades, but if you're one of them, it's very helpful to also analyze why you have missed a trade. Was it a process related uh, reason? Maybe you haven't done your chart work correctly. Maybe you weren't there where you're sleeping. You couldn't trade. Maybe you're at work or you're busy otherwise. And that's very helpful later on to analyze reasons for why you're missing trades to see if you can improve your process or if there's nothing that you can do about it. But everything works the same here. You can add numerous trades. You can duplicate them, delete them. You can make changes just like you do it in the trading plans and in the journal. And then we have some analysis for the missed trades. You have your performance for your missed trades. So this graph only shows you the performance of your missed trades. You can compare missed and real trades. In this case, because we only have a handful of missed trades, uh, we don't have a lot of data. But here you can see we have total of 40 US dollar on the missed trades. And you can compare that here. When we scroll down a little bit here, we have the missed trade custom statistic. And then you can see how the different reasons for missing trades influences your custom statistics and your performance. And then here at the bottom right, we have a table where you can compare your missed trades and the real trades. And we have a few data points and performance metrics that will help you to analyze your missed trades. Moving on to the diary, we have our notebook and the notebook is a note editor. It works just like Evernote or Notion. You can create categories here on the left and then next to it here in the middle, you have your individual notes that you have created. You can of course go through the different categories. You can create a new category here and then you can see here you have your note editor. You can style it a little bit and make changes to how it appears. You can print and export it as well. You can add new images to your notes. If you want to add a new note, you can click on the button here and it will always be created in the category where which you have currently selected. Now you have a new note. Here is the title area. And then here you can edit the content. Underneath the notebook, we have the sessions and sessions help you to do a regular performance review once a week, once a month, once a quarter. How often you want to do it, it's up to you. And what you do is you just simply click on add new or add more. And then you select a period. So assuming we want to analyze a session and this journal only has trades up until May so or end of May. So let's assume we want to create a weekly session from the Monday the 6th until Friday the 10th. And you can see we have five trades, five winners, no loser. We have a win rate of 100%, the gain, the gain in percentage, the R multiple and the tilt meter. You have here a little bit of space and we will make that a little bit bigger in the future where you can add new content so you can write some notes about specific sessions. For example, you write down things that have stood out about this week, things that you have learned, things that, that didn't go well, things that you want to improve and just things that, that stand out. You can rate your session. How well did you feel about the session, about the trades in your session, about your trading approach in general? You can rate the session. So here we have five trades, five winners. I think we can give this a five star rating. And you can also select a category that describes the lesson or the session in general. So let's assume we are very disciplined and we note that also here we can save that. And then we have a new session here in the table. Over time, by creating sessions regularly, you can follow your progress very nicely over time. So assuming you create a new session every week or every two weeks, then you will see over time how your trading has evolved. You can go through your notes as well that you have captured here and see what stood out, things that you want to keep in mind or things that you want to remember. And this way over time, this creates a very good way of helping you follow and track your broke progress just to raise the level of awareness a little bit more for your trading. Let's now move on to our chart lab where we have all our different visualization and analytical features. 
So first you can compare your different charts and you can see we have two slots side by side and here by choosing the different drop downs, you can see or you can choose what you want to compare. So let's assume we want to compare our equity graph to our holding time. If you want to do that, you can do that here side by side. On the left, we now have the equity graph. On the right, we have the holding time. And you can change that, obviously. You can apply the filters. And then you can analyze specific areas and specific graphs here very nicely side by side. And now let's move on to all the individual charts in the chart lab. First is the consecutive winners and losers. So here you can analyze your winning streaks and your losing streaks. Here at the bottom, you can see we have consecutive winners. And here we have also selected winners on default. So when you hover over here, you can see we have three consecutive winners and frequency four. So we have four winning streaks where we have three consecutive winners with a total of $499.62. We even have one winning streak where we have nine consecutive winners. And here we have one winning streak where we have 10 consecutive winners. We can also change that here to losers. And you can see we have one losing streak where we have six losses in a row. And here three losing streaks where we have three losses in a row. And of course you can change the display. By default, it's showing you here the return in your account currency but you can also change that to percentage or a multiple. Next are the custom statistics. So as I've explained, you can tag pretty much everything and we have up to 20 slots in Edge Wong where you can track different custom statistics. The first one that you, the trader has entered here is the time frame custom statistic. And you can see we have here the four hour, 30 minute, one hour, daily, 15 minute. And again, everything is completely customizable. You can change everything and I will show you later when we move on to our settings how this can be done. Most of the charts here in the chart lab have this display dropdown. So I will not always refer to it. And here you change what is showing here. So which unit by default, it's the return, but you can also always change it to the percentage or the R multiple. And the second dropdown here allows you to switch and change the different custom statistics that are used in this trading journal. And underneath the graphs, you will often find additional metrics and other data points. By hovering over the graphs and the lines in Edgewonk, you will see additional inputs such as how much return it has generated, the number of trades that the custom statistics has been used on, the winners, losses, and break-even trades. You can just hover over it and then it will always bring up this hover menu. Next is the drawdown graph. So the drawdown graph shows you how far away is your account from your all-time high. So here, for example, this seems to be the largest drawdown. We have the largest drawdown of 8.16%. Here you can also see the worst drawdown is always shown here. And when the red line is at zero, it means that the account is at an all-time high and there's no drawdown. Currently, we are at a drawdown of minus 1.91%. So the lower here the graph goes, the, the higher the drawdown currently is and the further away you are from your account peak. Efficiency refers to how well you are executing your trades and how well you are following your rules. So for example, when we hover over this data point, it shows 64.35%. It means that on 64% of your trades, you have followed your trading rules. The efficiency graph is influenced by the exit, the entry and the trade management comments. A negative comment will reduce the efficiency. A positive comment will increase the efficiency. In the beginning, when we have taken a look at the individual input parameters for each trade, I've shown you the highest and the lowest price inputs. And after you have entered the highest and the lowest price, it will unlock the exit analysis graph. So each bar, the red and the green part, represent one trade. The green part shows how much has the price moved in your favor. So here, for example, on this last trades, the price has moved 60% into the favor, into the direction of the take profit. We refer to this as updraw. And here the red part shows you that the price has moved 100% against the trader, which means it has moved towards the stop loss 100% and then hit the stop loss. The red and the green horizontal bar visualize the stop loss and the take profit on your trades. So the closer the green vertical bar is to your take profit, the closer the highest price or the lowest price was and has come towards your take profit. 
The black diamond marker shows the actual trade exit. So here you can see the black diamond marker is roughly at 50%. So this trader exited this trade halfway towards the take profit. The price you can see with the green bar would have moved a little bit more into the favor of the trader and has moved closer to the take profit target. But the trader wasn't able to take the exit at the most optimal point and close the trade a little bit lower. You can click on those bars and then it will also bring up the trade. And then here under advanced trade data, the highest and the lowest price, you can see the inputs as well. Next is the holding time. And in the holding time graph, each dot represents one trade. So when we hover over, you can see the trade number. You have the exit date. You will see the holding time in days here, 3.17 days, the return as well. You can change here the time settings. So instead of changing and showing the holding time in days, you can change it to hours. So this is more interesting for short term day trader. And then obviously here as well for scalpers and very short term day traders, you can change it to minutes as well. A green dot represents a winning trade. So a positive outcome and a red trade and red dot shows a negative losing trade. Moving on to the performance by instrument. Here you can see a breakdown of all of the different instruments that are used and have been tracked in this trading journal. Instead of sorting it by the instrument name, we can also sort it by the value. So you can see the best performing instrument here on the left and the worst performing instrument here on the right. Hovering over gives you here a few more data points on each instrument. The performance by setup works almost identical, but instead of the instruments, you will see the setups. So every setup or strategy that has been tagged and used in Edgewonk is then displayed here. Again, you can change the sorting and you can find your best performing and your worst performing setup here. How many trades have been taking and the overall performance as well. The performance by time works the same, but you will see here the different weekdays. So how well are you performing on each weekday? Important to note is that on default, it shows you the entry date. But you can also change that and then see instead how are you doing on your exit date. And then you will see it changes slightly because it only uses the exit date to determine here the dates for your performance. By default, it shows the weekday, Monday through Sunday. But if you are a short term trader, you can also change it to hour of the day. Or you can even go more granular and say you want to see 30 minute. You can even go further and see, say you want a 10 minute or 15 minute intervals. And if you are a longer term trader, you can look at the different calendar weeks or you can even look at the months and see how well are you doing on specific months and how is your year going so far. We have different performance ratios here that you can also analyze. So here we have at the first one is the sharp ratio and you can see we have others like the Sortino ratio, gain to pain, karma, profit factor and the SQN. You can overlay and compare different ones together but because of scaling issues that will not always work. And you can see here, you can have now the gain to pain and the Kalma. You can hover over it and then you get the two data points for the Kalma and the gain to pain. You can bring up the trade that is behind each data point and then review it as well. The risk distribution is very insightful and very important because it gives you insights into your risk management and your position sizing. So what we do here is that we group your trade outcomes and the return of each trade into intervals. For example, let's hover over this bar and you can see it shows 0.75 to 1, which means because we have display here in percentage, which means it shows you all of the trades that have a return of 0.75% to 1%. So you have 11 closed trades in this trading journal where your profit is somewhere between 0.75 and 1% of your account capital. You want to especially look for outliers, especially negative outliers are very important here to analyze. If you see that you have negative outliers here very far to the left, it shows that you have large losses. And this is something that traders need to address. A lot of amateur or struggling traders will often have single large losses that can easily wipe out days, weeks, or in some cases, even months of good trading. So if you see that you have outliers to the left, that's definitely something that you want to address. Most of the time you will see that most of your trading results should be clustered here close to the center when you are applying consistent and conservative risk management and position sizing rules. Let's move on to the trade comments. 
And here we can analyze our entry, the exit and the trade management comments that I've already shown you. So we get a breakdown of all of the used trade comments in our journal. So here we can see we have 51 trades where we have assigned perfect entry to a trade and we can see the total return is 7,537 US dollar. And then you can see on trades where you have a negative rating, for example, revenge trading, you have tagged 10 trades with this comment and you have lost a total of 1,674. You can change that and go to your exit comments and you can also do that for your trade management comments here and get the breakdown. The trade management graph is super important and very, very helpful. And here we analyze your trading decisions. A lot of traders have problem with making good trading decisions when they are in a trade, which mostly means leaving money on the table by exiting winning trades too early or closing losses too late. You want to especially focus on the actual and the potential performance. And everything here is shown in terms of R multiple, risk multiple. The actual performance shows you how much R multiple you have made in your trading journal. It's the same as when you go to the equity graph and change it here to the R multiple. So it's the performance in terms of a multiple of your trading account. And you want to compare to the potential performance. How much money could you have potentially made based on a passive set and forget approach, which means that when you enter your trade, you have your stop loss, you have your take profit. And then with a passive approach, you do not interfere with your trades. You place your trades and then you let it play out and you wait until either the stop loss or the take profit has been hit. Here, interestingly, in the beginning, the green line, the potential performance is above the actual performance. This means the trader could have potentially made more money and he is mismanaging the trade. We can also see that here when we look at the management effect, minus 34.78R, which means that the trader has mismanaged the trades up until this point by 34.78R. So he's making trading mistakes on the trade management decisions. He has corrected it afterwards and then he is making more money than what he potentially could. So it means that he's probably leaving his trades longer or he's cutting his losses more effectively before the price is hitting the stop loss. We have made several videos about this graph and also in all or pretty much all of the trade review and journal review videos that we have done for our customers. We always come back to this graph because it's so insightful and it's something that will help a lot of traders. And then of course we also have the win rate so you can plot and analyze your win rate over time. In the beginning you can see the win rate was at 42% and then it has improved up until 64%. And currently we have a win rate of 62.26% for this journal. That's it for our chart lab. And now let's move on to our reports. First, the calendar. The calendar is very self-explanatory. So here you will have a calendar overview. You will see how many trades you have taken per day and P&L for that date. You can change it to percentage and also to a multiple. By clicking on a specific tile here in the calendar, it will bring you to the journal and pre-select the trades for that specific day as well. If you click here on the X next to the month, it will bring you to the annual view. So here you can see all of your current trades this year that you have taken. Next, we have the monthly reports, which give you a breakdown of your trading performance by month. So for example, here in May, that's the last month with trades in this journal, we have taken 29 trades the return, the return and percentage, win rate, average PL, and a few other very important data points. Here you can see you have a, an arrow next to the month and when you open it, it will give you the individual calendar weeks here for this trading journal and for the trades. So you can see each week how you have performed, how many trades you have taken. The arrow next to the metric show you whether your trading has improved or has gotten worse over time. And it always compares the last two weeks to see and show you how is your trading going over time. So if we compare the two weeks here and we want to take a look at the last week, we can see here there is an arrow down because we have a negative return and the return has gotten worse. We have here a return in percentage that is worse. But interestingly, the win rate is better here for this current week than the week before that. And then we have our chart book where you have all of the screenshots that you have tagged and added to the trades in your trading journal. 
This is where you see all of the different trades. So each tile represents one trade. And then when you click on it, it will bring up the specific trade and the specific uh, screenshots for the trade. You can also open a trade directly here after you've selected on the left, you'll see here this open trade icon or button, and then it will bring up the trade. You can go to your screenshots, you can add or remove specific screenshots here directly. Here is a little arrow and icon. You can click on this and it will close the journal trades. And then you have missed trades and planned trades. So we only have one screenshot for the missed trades and we have no screenshots for planned trades. But if your journal has screenshots for missed and planned trades, you will see them here in the chart book as well. Let's come to our strategy lab. The alternative strategies are a very advanced feature, but it's very, very popular among our long-term and more advanced users as well. So in your trading, you usually have your regular trading approach. Let's assume you're trading with a fixed reward to risk ratio where you have your fixed way of placing your target and your stop. But you're wondering how would my performance look like if I would use a trailing stop loss alternatively instead of your regular approach? How would you go about that? So what you can do is, for example, you do a, you add a new alternative strategy and you could name it. For example, let's call it trail stop. So we want to analyze our trades where we have taken, for example, breakout trades, and we want to analyze how a trading stop loss would have performed. And after you've selected the setup, it will bring up the list with all of the trades that have this setup assigned. Here you can already see that's your PNL for the breakout trades as they have been entered in your journal with your actual trades. Here you can see this is the profit per trade and the multiple per trade. With the alternative strategies, what you can do is that you open each trade. Ideally, you also have a screenshot, which will make this much, much easier. So you would just open the screenshot and analyze how would a trailing stop loss have performed. And then you would just ask yourself, how much would this trade have generated and realized if I would have used a trailing stop loss instead. So assuming we have here a outcome instead of 1,897 of 2,075, you will just enter it here and then you can see this will start to update and you will just do it trade by trade. Trade number two, you look at your screenshot. If the, screen, if the trade has some screenshots, it's much, much easier. And then here under trailing stop loss, you will say, okay, this didn't realize 87, but it realized maybe 234. You do that here. And then after you have done that for all of your trades, you will see and you will be able to compare your actual performance with the alternative approach. So this is a very big time saver for your trading. If you have an existing strategy, but you're wondering how alternative approaches would have performed. And this way you don't have to go through a complete back test again, but you can do that very, very quickly and get a very accurate number and then make assumptions and make decisions about how to move forward. Do you implement the alternative approach or do you stick to your current approach because it's performing better? And that's what the alternative strategies are for. Next under strategy lab is our backtester. And here you can quickly backtest trading approaches or trading strategies. So how it works is that you click here to create a new backtest. And then here you have this pop-up that comes up. We are currently improving the styling here so it will look more stretched out and you will have more space. But basically what you have here is at the top left is a number of trades. You can see the first column is trade number and then you have 10 rows here uh, for the trades that you can backtest. And then when you're doing your backtest in TradingView or you're doing it in any other software, you will just do your backtesting on your TradingView. And then after you've taken a backtest trade, you will come here and enter the outcome, note it down. Oops, you need to add a dot and not a comma. And then you will have your outcomes here. And then over time, you already see that this will also update here the graph. You can create some notes here. You have a text editor where you can talk about the backtest, what type of strategy are you trading, what are the rules, the timeframes, the markets. And then over time, you will be able to create and capture all of your backtesting results here. You have some more analysis here, the trades, the winners, the losers, break even trades, the win rate, and the total profit for outcome one or outcome two. So this is a very quick way of doing a backtest. What we have seen is that other traders create a completely new trading journal and they create a journal for each of the backtests. 
And this is better if you want to capture a lot of data points for your backtest, because then you can use the regular journal for your backtesting traits. But if you want to focus uh, just a few individual data points and you just want to quickly get an idea of how your performance look like for a specific backtested strategy, then using the backtester in the strategy lab might be uh, your better option because it's much faster and you don't have to import as many data points. And this brings us to our simulator. So what we do here is that we take your current trading performance. You can see it's grayed out, 64% win rate. The average gain per trade is 215. The average loss is 216 US dollar. Starting balance, 30,000. And your average R multiple based on the metrics here is 0.99. And you can choose the number of simulations and how many trades you want to simulate. So for example, let's assume we want to simulate 50 trades for 10 simulations. We start a simulation and then here you can see this is how a potential account development could look like. Here you can see the lines are very, very far apart. And this is because the trading strategy here is just slightly profitable. We have a moderately low win rate and a very small R multiple. If we would change that and if we have a much higher R multiple, so assume we have an R multiple that is closer maybe to three to one. So you can see we have now an R multiple of 2.9. We start a simulation. Now you can see the different lines are much, much closer together and are moving to the top left. So depending on how far apart each or the lines are, and how strongly they are moving into the top right, that shows you how profitable the system is. The more profitable system is, the more clustered and together your simulation lines are, then the further apart they are, the less profitable it is. We can also increase the number of simulations or number of trades here to get an, a look into the further future. And you can see that here. Over the long term, it looks much different, right? Over the next 500 trades, we can expect with those types of inputs, this type of performance. Whereas over the next 50 trades, the outcome is much less certain and not as great. And remember, when we have looked at our current trading data, which was 215, you can see that this is pretty much all over the place because the graphs and the lines are spreading out very, very far. So the simulator is a tool designed to give you an idea of how your performance could look like in the future so that you are prepared for what might be coming next. You can learn about your trading performance here by looking at the data points below the graphs as well. What's the longest winning streak and the losing streak, how many winners you have, how many losers and so on and so forth. And this brings us now to our settings. When we open our settings, we have our general settings first. Here you can rename your trading journal and this will change the name of this journal here. You can change your account currency. You can see we have pretty much all of the currencies. If you are using a currency that is not supported for whatever reason, just send us an email and we will change that as well. You can choose the markets that you are trading. So you're a stock trader, your spread betting futures, Forex currencies, your cryptos or CFD. You can do that here as well. If you are trading options or futures, you can do that here. Otherwise, you will leave it at spot. You can automatically let us calculate your profit and loss. This is only interesting if you're in, uh, if you're manually adding your trades. If you are importing your trades with our import feature, then the profit and loss is automatically calculated and imported from your broker statement anyway. Here you will see all of the deposits and the withdrawals in your trading journal. So here, 2018, we have our starting balance. That's the first deposit. And then you can see uh, between that, we've made a withdrawal and then another deposit later. You can add new deposits or withdrawals. So we have, so here first you select a date, then the amount, and then the reason is uh, also, you can do it at here. And then you will be able to follow all of your deposits and withdrawals. Under instruments, you can find all of the instruments that have been tracked and traded in this trading journal. You can see we can drag and drop that around. This will change the sorting in the filter as well and in the drop down in the journal as well. So if you want to rearrange that, you can do that. Same is true for setups. You have all the different setups. You can add new setups here or you can add new setups when you are editing your trades in the pop up as I've shown you. There's even a field for a description. So if you want to explain or 
comment about specific setup that you are trading, you can do that here as well. And you can rearrange that, which will adjust the order also in the filters. Trade comments work the same. So you have three slots for your entry, your trade management and your exit comments. Here is the name for the comment. If you click in one of the names, you can change that. And next to it, you have the rating. So negative stands for a negative trading behavior. Positive describes a positive trading behavior. You can change the rating here. You can add new ones as well. And then you can see it automatically shows up here. Deleting it will remove it, but it's not going to completely remove it. It's just going to be here under disabled icons. We don't remove it just to guarantee the integrity of the data of your trading journal. Then we have the different session categories as I've shown you in the diary and sessions. When you're adding a new session, you have the session category here as the dropdown and under sessions and settings, you can add new sessions, you can rename them, you can delete them and you completely can customize it. And this is also true for the custom statistics. Here are all the slots for all of the different custom statistics. You can see we have 20 slots in total. Most of them haven't been used in this journal and you can see they all have a title. You can change the title if you want. So just by clicking here in the top, you can change all of the different titles. You can rename them. And then here, if you want to add a new custom comment to one of the categories, you can do that. You can change existing ones. You can move them around. And that's how you then can fully personalize and customize your own Edgewonk trading journal.